right, so today we're doing 1.6, which is features of graphs. And here are the objectives for today. So I can identify intervals of increase and decrease from a graph. I can identify relative maximum and minimum values from a graph. And I can identify the end behavior of a graph. As you work through a video lesson, I'm not going to spend um, extra time for you to write stuff down because you can pause the video at any point. So go ahead and do that if you're copying down these objectives or anytime you need extra time on a problem. So here is the vocabulary for 1.6. We are introducing four new terms, um, at least in this part in the lesson. So relative maximum, relative minimum, interval of increase and interval of decrease. For relative maximum, that is the highest output within a certain section of the graph. The highest output within a certain section of the graph. And these can be written two ways. You can write these as ordered pairs or you can write them as y equals something when x equals something. So it's the same information, it's just formatted two different ways. Relative minimum is the lowest output within a certain section of the graph. And again, that can be written as an ordered pair, or you can write it as a y value when x equals a certain number. So again, it's the same information either way. In pre-calc, you're going to be writing them more as ordered pairs, but in calculus, you would write it more the alternate way. So I'm telling you both. For interval of increase, that's an interval on the graph where the slope is positive. And it is written in terms of x. And then interval of decrease is an interval on the graph where the slope is negative. And it's written in terms of x as well. Now for all of these, I have a way of remembering. Um, and what I imagine you're doing is you're driving across the graph. So if you're imagining that you're driving across the graph, you're always driving left to right, just like the way we read. We always read left to right. So imagine you're driving on the graph left to right. Your relative maximum is going to be the top of a hill. So anytime your graph there is the top of a hill or what would be the top of the hill if you were driving on the graph, that's going to be your maximums. That means your minimums are going to be the bottom of a hill. So again, if you can imagine that you are driving on your graph, the top of the hill is a maximum, the bottom of the hill would be a relative minimum. Intervals of increase are where you would be driving uphill, going uphill. And then intervals of decrease is where you'd be going downhill. And so this is just a way to help visualize that again. If you can remember that you're driving left to right across your graph, top of the hill, bottom of the hill, when you're driving uphill and when you're driving downhill are all really, I think, easy ways to imagine what's going on with these four features of graphs. So let's do an example, okay? And I have some of these things labeled on here already. So we're going to go ahead and look at this graph and then list all of these things for this graph. So domain and range we've done before. The domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. If I squish that onto the x-axis, it would be the entire x-axis. If I squish that graph onto the y-axis, it would be the entire y-axis as well. So that's also negative infinity to positive infinity. Relative maximum, that is the highest output within a certain area of the graph. So again, if we're driving on this graph left to right, that's going to be the top of the hill. So this would be my relative maximum, negative 216. I can also say that as y equals 16 when 
x equals negative 2. So write them both down for these first couple examples, and then we'll be um, good with ordered pairs after that. Relative minimum, that is the bottom of a hill. So that's going to be this other point, 2, negative 16. Again, y equals negative 16 when x equals 2. Alternate way of writing that. Now, here's the hard one, the interval of increase and decrease. And this is because it is all based on your x-axis. We're describing where the graph has a positive slope in interval notation in terms of x. Then we are describing where the graph has a negative slope in terms of x. Okay, and this is an interval notation because it's the interval of increase, the interval of decrease. So the interval of increase, the slope has a positive graph in this section, or a positive slope in this section and in this section. Okay, that is where the slope is positive. So we describe that on the x-axis. So as I look at the x-axis, starting at negative infinity all the way to negative 2, that is where I have a positive slope. So I'm going to describe that in interval notation. Starting at negative infinity all the way to negative 2, I have a positive slope. The other location I have a positive slope starts at 2 and goes to positive infinity. So I can use the union symbol 2 to positive infinity. Now, for interval of increase and decrease, they are always exclusive. You are never going to use those brackets that have corners on them. And the reason why is we are just describing where it is increasing and decreasing. If you include the maximum, that is actually not a place where the slope is positive. That is where the slope is changing from positive to negative. So it's neither positive or negative. It is changing at that point, which is why we don't include it. Lastly, we can do the interval of decrease. So we are describing in terms of x where the slope is negative. So that is going to be between negative 2 and positive 2. So that would be my interval of decrease, negative 2 to positive 2. So again, we're describing in terms of x where my slope is positive and in terms of x where my slope is negative. Example B. Again, domain and range, you can try those on your own. The domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. The range would be negative infinity all the way up to this top y value, which is 800 based on the scale of my graph. And sorry, that would be inclusive because that is a solid uh, filled in circle as the maximum. Now I just said it, but this graph does have a maximum at 2800. Again, you can also say y equals 800 when x equals 20. And this one's not even a relative minimum. It's actually an absolute, or sorry, maximum. It's actually an absolute maximum. So relative maximum is used to describe a maximum within a certain area. But if it is the maximum for the entire graph, we can call that an absolute maximum. So it's just a different... Um, kind of more descriptive word. If it is the absolute tippity top of the entire graph, there is no point that goes over it, then we can call that an absolute maximum. Now, if we compare that to example number one, I had relative maxes and mins because there was a part of the graph that went even higher than that relative maximum. There was a part of the graph that went even lower than that relative minimum, which is why they were called relative. But if it is the top of the graph, there's not a point that goes anywhere beyond that, then we can call it an absolute maximum. If I'm looking for a relative minimum on this graph, unfortunately, there is none. There is no point where this graph is going, um, kind of has a bottom of the hill. It goes all the way to negative infinity, so that would be that. Interval of increase, we're looking at our x-axis 
Where is my slope positive? And again, we're working our way left to right. So it's looking like my slope changes at this x value of 20. So my interval of increase would be from negative infinity to positive 20. Again, we're never making those inclusive because at 20, that is where the slope is changing from positive to negative. So it's not neither positive or negative. And then the interval of decrease starts at 20 and goes to positive infinity. So that slope's gonna be negative that entire time. Now again, imagine you're driving a little car and this is gonna be about the worst car you've ever seen, left to right across the graph. Well, you can think to yourself, oh, okay, that car would be going uphill from zero to, or from negative infinity to 20, x value of 20. It'd be going downhill from 20 to infinity and at 20, that is where that absolute maximum is. That is the top of the hill. That is the highest that car would ever be on that graph. Now, we've been dealing with uh, continuous functions that go on forever and ever. This is a function that has a you know finite domain, finite range, so it does not have arrows going on to infinities. Uh, but you can still find all of these features for a graph like this. So domain on this one is going to go from negative infinity, or sorry, <laughs> negative four, excuse me, negative four to positive five, inclusive on both. Again, no arrows, so no infinities. My range is going to go from negative seven to positive five. And then we can have relative maxes and relative mins on a graph like this. So there's actually two different uh, maximums on this graph. There is the tallest spot on the graph, which is at negative 4 or 5. And since there's two, I'm just going to write them both as ordered pairs. Now that is the highest point on the whole graph, so we can call that an absolute maximum. No other point on the graph gets taller than that. But there is another relative maximum, which is the top of any hill. And so again, if you're imagining that you're driving on this graph left to right, you would have the top of a small hill at 2, 2. And so that is a relative maximum. That is a relative maximum. So you can have both. You can have an absolute maximum. That's the tippity top of the whole graph. And then you can have a relative maximum, which is a hill somewhere within the graph, even if it is not higher than the other maximum. Same idea with minimum. So where would the bottom of the hills be? Well, at 0, 1, that's going to be the bottom of a hill. So again, if we were driving that car, that would be the bottom of a hill, and I'd start making my way up again. And then there's also an absolute minimum. So this is a relative and then at 5, negative 7, that is an absolute. That is the lowest point on that graph that we would get to. Interval of increase and decrease, we're looking at that x-axis. We're describing in terms of x where my uh, graph has a positive slope. So in terms of x, it's looking like that would be between 0 and 2. That is the only location where that slope is positive. So 0 to 2 would be my interval of increase. And then my interval of decrease is going to be this left section of the graph and this right section of the graph described in terms of x. So negative 4 to 0 in union with 2 to 5. And you can use those ordered pairs to help you. That tells me where that graph's slope is changing because those are my maximums and minimums. So use those ordered pairs to help you see those x values. All right, now we're going to combine this with transformation graphing. So this is a graph that we have seen before. Um, this is a quadratic parent function. So I'm going to go ahead, put that on my graph. We want to graph this first, and then we're going to describe all of the features. So put that parent function on the graph, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. PF for parent function. And then there are two different transformations that are happening here. There is a compression by one half 
Again, this is one of those vertical compressions. We're going to talk about horizontal ones later this year. So I'm going to do a compression by one half. And then also this whole graph is going to move down too. And so that will affect what is going on um, with our features. So if I compress this graph by one half, everything needs to be half as far from the x-axis. So... Uh, the point zero, zero is not going to move. One, one is going to go to one, one half. Two, four is going to go to two, two. Negative one, one is going to go to negative uh, one, one half. And negative two, two is going to go to negative two. Sorry, negative two, four is going to go to negative two, two. So that's where all of those points are going to be once I do that compression. And then I'm going to move that whole thing down to... So down two with every point. So as I'm describing these features, we are describing that sort of teal colored graph, that teal colored graph, which is our final. So this is our final graph. So the domain, negative infinity to positive infinity. The range starts at negative two inclusive to positive infinity. So there is no relative maximum. There is a relative minimum. In fact, it's an absolute minimum because it is the lowest part on that graph. It is at zero, negative two. And then my interval of increase, I am looking at my x-axis describing in terms of x where my slope is positive. So that's going to start at an x value of 0 and go to infinity, that whole right side of the graph. And my interval of decrease is going to be the left side of the graph where that slope is negative. So starting at negative infinity, going to 0. So again, those are an in interval notation. You always have the smallest number first, the largest number second. We're always working left to right when we're describing those. All right, the last thing that we're going to be talking about today is called end behavior. So this is an additional feature of the graph that you have not seen before. End behavior is used to describe the outputs of a graph as the inputs approach positive and negative infinity. And this has kind of a special format. So as we're doing uh, end behavior, okay, you're going to write it the same way every time. So what we do is we say, as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches either positive infinity or negative infinity. And so again, these arrows mean approaches. That's how you say that, approaches. And we're always going to write it with arrows. We're going to write that in that format. Then there's a second part to it. We say as x approaches negative infinity, or people also say goes to, that's an alternate way of saying that. As x approaches negative infinity, y approaches either positive infinity or negative infinity. And so the only thing that changes, the only thing that you're going to do differently is actually the second part. The first part always is the same, but this is what is changing. Only part that changes. Now, this is a little bit different than the features we've been looking at before because this is actually starting in the middle of your graph and working your way outwards. So you're imagining you're starting in the middle of your graph and you're working your way to the right, you're working your way to the left. So you're starting in the middle, but it's, it's harder um, to kind of imagine because we have been working our way left to right, left to right, left to right. And with end behavior, you're, you're training your eye to start in the middle of the graph and then work your way to the right and work your way to the left. So it's a little bit different. It's something we're going to have to practice. So here's how end behavior works. We're going to do it for these three graphs. Um, again, you're training your brain to start in the middle of the graph and say, as I go to the right, what's happening to the y value? As I go to the left, what's happening to the y value? So we can practice this. As 
x approaches infinity, y approaches what? So literally what that is saying is if you start at the origin and you move your way to the right, that's x approaching infinity. As x gets bigger, what is y going to? So basically, since I'm going to the right, x is going to infinity, y is going down forever. Do you see that? As I go to the right, my y value is going down forever. So y would approach negative infinity. And then we do it the other way. As I go to the left, as x goes to negative infinity, where is y going? Is it going up or down? So as I go left, my y value is going up. So y approaches positive infinity. So again, with end behavior, you start in the middle. We are just describing the very, very, very ends of this graph. If I go all the way to the right, am I going up or down? Okay. As I go all the way to the left, am I going up or down? And we're describing it in terms of infinity. So let's try that middle graph. As I work my way to the right, so as x goes to positive infinity, where is y going? y is going down, so y goes to negative infinity. Again, we're starting in the middle of the graph and we're working our way to the ends. That's why it's called the end behavior. It's the behavior of the graph at its ends. As x goes to negative infinity, so as I go left, where's y value going? It's going down. y goes to negative infinity. Again, the only part that can change is that second part. So the only part that can vary is these infinities. Everything else is the exact same. Let's try that third one. As, oops, helps if I'm not on highlighter, as x goes to infinity, y goes to positive infinity. So as I'm going to the right, I'm going up. That's what that's telling me. As x goes to negative infinity, so as I go left, where am I going? Oh, I'm going up again. y goes to positive infinity. So the formatting is a little weird, but again, basically what we're saying is if I start in the middle and I go to the right, am I going up or down? Okay, then when I go to the left, am I going up or down? All right, so let's do this example. We're bringing it all together. We're doing every single feature on this graph. So here we go. Domain, negative infinity to positive infinity. If I squished that onto the x-axis, I'd have the entire x-axis. Range, negative infinity to positive infinity. If I squished that onto the y-axis, I'd have the entire y-axis. Relative maximum, we can write that as an ordered pair. That's going to be this point right here. Be paying special attention to our units. So our y-axis goes by threes. Every box is three. So I think our relative maximum is going to be at negative 121. That's an ordered pair. So again, remember that's an ordered pair. It looks like interval notation, but it's an ordered pair. My relative minimum is going to be over here. So that's going to be... 3, negative 24. My interval of increase describing on my x-axis where my slope is positive. So it's looking like my slope's going to change at that max in the min. So my interval of increase is negative infinity all the way to negative 1, right? It's changing here in union with, and then starting at 3 to infinity is where it's going to also be positive. And then my interval of decrease is between those two. So my interval of decrease is between negative 1 and 3. Then my end behavior, as I work my way to the right, so as x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity, and as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity. So as I go right, I go up. As I go left, I go down. And then one more example, bringing it all together. 
Some of these graphs you might have to estimate as well, so that's okay. Don't worry about it. Do your best, especially on the homework assignment. You're going to have to estimate some, so give me the best decimals you can. Domain, negative infinity to positive infinity. If I squish that on the x-axis, the entire thing would be highlighted on that. I'd have that entire x-axis. My range starts at negative 40, inclusive, goes all the way to positive infinity. If there's no specific point, it is a closed circle. I'm going to try to draw these on here just to help me estimate. <laughs> there we go. Relative maximum. It's kind of hard to see exactly where that is. I can't tell. Just so it matches the answer key. I think I said it's like right here. So it's a tiny bit to the left of two. So let's call that like 1.7510. It's like just a little bit to the left of two. It's kind of hard to tell. So I'm going to, I think it's like right here. 1.7510. That'll work. Ish. It's okay. We can estimate. Relative minimum. There are two of them. So it looks like I have negative 1, negative 40, and 3 and a half. Uh, what would that be? Negative 4 ish. Again, look at that, uh, the axis because that's going by 10, so eh, it's about negative 4, sure, that'll, that'll work. And then also a good thing to remember is, hey, if these are the maxes and mins that I chose, you can write them on here. That can help you with your interval of increase and decrease. So if you said that's 3.5, well, with your interval of increase and decrease, that also has to be 3.5, you know what I mean? So let's try to round the same, approximate the same. So based off these values, my interval of increase is where my slope is positive in terms of x. So it looks like that'd go from negative 1 to positive 1.75 in union with, and then we have this right section of the graph that also has a positive slope. So that's going to go from 3.5 all the way to infinity. It's going to be uphill after that. And then my interval of decrease is going to be from negative infinity to negative 1 in union with, and then 1.75 to 3.5. So that is where my graph is negative. Lastly, my end behavior. As x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity. So as I go to the right, it goes up. And as x goes to negative infinity, y also goes to positive infinity. As I go left, I go up as well. And then last but not least, here are our objectives. So take a look at that. See if you feel like you can do those things. And then you are going to be working on homework packet number three. It is one assignment. You can get it from the substitute. Um, and then you can submit it digitally. Or if you happen to finish, it'd be very fast if you finish, you can do that. There's also a homework helper document on Canvas. So if you want to look at that just to help clarify some things or check that you're doing things correctly, then I would do that as well. I will see you guys later. Have an awesome weekend.